Thoughts podcast. We are more than excited to have you on the podcast today. Oh, thank you so much. Um, so you're in Melbourne rehearsing for um, An American in Paris, which is yeah. coming soon. Yeah. Um, you start in Melbourne first and then you make your way up to Sydney, I believe. Oh, we no, we're rehearsing in Melbourne. We actually open in Brisbane. Oh, amazing. Excellent. So, yeah, we do Brisbane, Adelaide, Perth, back to Melbourne, then Sydney. We finish in Sydney. Lovely. Good. Yeah. So they get the lucky ones first up in Brisbane. <laughs> um, so I, I guess for our listeners, if you could just uh, introduce yourself first for those who aren't familiar with you and your work, um, just kind of give them a bit of scope about you as a performer. Okay. Um, so I'm Leanne Cope. And I'm British, as you might be able to hear. <laughs> um, I actually started my performing career as a ballet dancer with the Royal Ballet. Um, I went through the whole kind of training, so through the Royal Ballet School, and then I joined the company when I was 18. And then um, about 12 years into my time in the company, I'm going to give away how old I am now, um, <laughs> uh, Christopher Wilden was... Um, in London creating his ballet Alice's Adventures in Wonderland which I think is a very popular ballet here actually I know Oz Ballet do it a lot and he uh, messaged me at the time asking um he said uh, I heard you used to sing in the choir at school would you like to sing for me and I thought that's a bit of a strange request <laughs> um yeah. not knowing he didn't say what it was about at all and it ended up being um my kind of audition for an American in Paris. Um, so I left the ballet company. Well, I didn't leave, I took a sabbatical. Um, they were really actually wonderful and said I could come back and just take this time away. Um, so I took some time off to go and create the role. We did a workshop and we opened in Paris first. Wow. Then, then we went to Broadway. Then we came to the West End and now I'm here. <laughs> Excellent. Obviously everything that's happened in between. We all know what's happened in between. Let's not mention that. <laughs> yeah, so there's kind of moving on from that. It's the behind yeah. us now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it was really just by chance, it was the real fresh, uh, you were discovered as the, you know, the term is. Yeah, I guess so. It's, it's strange because I was thinking about it today. I just, I've done an interview already today and thinking about it, theatre, musical theatre has always been kind of my first love. Um, I love ballet, don't get me wrong, um, but that musical theatre was my introduction to theatre. Um, I went to see Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat with Jason Donovan. Oh, wow. <laughs> I remember a, a trip up to London with my mum and dad and my brother and my godparents. And um, that was my first experience of a musical. And apparently I was absolutely gripped. I was literally on the edge of my seat, whereas my brother was asleep under the chair. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I think I was about six at the time. And I was just totally. Yeah, musical theatre probably is my my first love. Excellent, yeah. excellent. I remember when when I lived in the UK, uh, the Joseph um, Joseph is a very different musical. I think over there, um, it's uh, it it seems to be that it's one of the most popular musicals. I think, and anyone who does musical theatre has some sort of connection to Joseph yeah. in some form. Absolutely. And I find that fascinating. Um, personally. Um, so you, you're uh, bringing an American in Paris to Australia. Uh, mm -hmm. You originated the role of Lise de Sain, uh on Broadway and then took it to the West End and now you're originating Lise here again. Uh -huh. um, could you just uh, what just kind of give us a bit of um, an idea on who Lise is in in the kind of aspect and context of the show itself? Well, I guess she's she's kind of the leading lady. Um, I mean, there's also Milo as well as a huge part, um, but it's kind of, um, it's, Lise has this wonderful kind of journey of discovery throughout, which I, uh, despite it being a, the romantic kind of lead, um, what I love about Lise is um, you kind of start the show as a, a kind of young woman who's, 
she's Jewish. The show is set at the liberation of Paris. So we all know how the Jewish people were treated during the Second World War. And she's been in hiding for the whole, whole of the war. Um, and she kind of emerges from, I was going to say lockdown then, but it, it kind of is. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. This young woman, I mean, she started the war probably a, a kind of teenager and now she's suddenly this young woman out into the world and she she's a young ballerina and um, has this passion to dance and also has a really high sense of duty to not only her parents um, who unfortunately we don't know where they are um, we can all imagine what's happened to Lisa's parents being Jewish but um, a sense of duty to her parents to live a very full life because they didn't get to and um, a duty to the Burrell family because they looked after her during the war and they risked their life and their safety to hide her. So um, this very big sense of duty and that having to do everything on behalf of other people. But in the end, she makes a decision to do something for herself, which yeah. is to, to end up with the man that she truly loves. Um, so I think that's a really wonderful journey for her. Um, throughout the show and all the characters go on this fantastic journey throughout the show um discovering new things about themselves um so yeah it's 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 got a lot of hidden depths this show and every time I get to do it again and I rediscover in rehearsals I find more and more each time yeah definitely it must be just like an exploration of the character I was watching a, a YouTube video on you talking about the character on Broadway uh -huh. and your discussion about like the background of of Lise was was fascinating to see how much you can actually go into um a character just kind of beyond um I guess the surface level of who they are and of, and, and American Paris has been transferred from film now to stage mm -hmm. um written by George and Ira Gershwin um and it's this beautiful amalgamation of like classical jazz symphonic jazz but with Broadway sort of theaters and styles to it um, mm -hmm. So how does it kind of translate? How do you believe the the uh, the context of the film translates from film to stage? Do you think it kind of changes and adapts in any way that makes you appreciate it more? I think the the fact that the show is set, like I said before, at the liberation of Paris, whereas the film, the movie is set kind of the beginning of the 50s. So Paris is a very different place then. So the film is very much MGM, Technicolor, isn't mm -hmm. everything wonderful, wasn't it a wonderful war? It's, the war's not even really mentioned, apart from the fact that Jerry is a GI that stayed on the GI Bill to stay in Paris to learn his um, craft of being an artist. Other than that, the war is not mentioned. Whereas because we've taken it um, right to that point of liberation, the stakes are so much higher for everyone. So it's a, it essentially is the same um, as the as movie, as in the characters, but the stakes are just a lot higher for each of them and what they've been through and what they're bringing to the table when they all meet. It is kind of amalgamation of these characters at this moment in time and um, their journeys um, to get to, to getting over what has just happened to them. Yeah, yeah, so it would be... Um, I guess it's quite it's the surrounding of the like the show is quite heavy subject matter but the musical stylings and the choreography is so gorgeous with the ballet like I was watching clips from the show and I, I watched the uh, recording that you did for the uh, the show must go on recording mm -hmm. and um, I was I was honestly I was mesmerized like yeah. I'm not I'm not a massive like ballet person. I would like, I don't want to like lie to you. I'm not a massive like ballet person. I've always wanted to go to like a full on ballet show. And I think this show is a perfect middle ground to meet for people who love the ballet, for people who love musical theater and it kind of meets right in the middle. Um, would you yeah. kind of agree with that? Absolutely. I remember when we were first um, doing a lot of press for the show and they said to myself and Robbie, don't mention ballet because they were so scared that people would be scared <laughs> of right, it. Right, okay. Not come to the show. Um, so, but then when people came to watch and they actually realised this kind of 
the joy of it and this kind of it's the 11 o'clock number you know it's the big big number and it is you know it is impressive and it is emotional and I think people are like oh okay ballet's not as um, unreachable as I, untouchable as I thought it was. And then maybe they'll go buy a ticket for the ballet. And I think it works vice versa. People who only ever go and watch ballet are suddenly like, oh, okay, Robbie Fairchild, principal from the New York City Ballet, let's go and see a musical. And it's gonna be exactly the same here. You know, we're doing this um, in conjunction with the Australian Ballet. Mm. So um, we have Dimity and Cameron um, from the Australian Ballet, both principal dancers and that kind of transference between the two worlds um, is it, just really, really exciting. So as a, um, a trained ballet dancer um, coming into a musical theatre context, do you bring, what sort of training and rituals do you sort of bring into before you start a show? Like, is there anything that you particularly do each time? Yeah, it's, you know, it's, I will always do my ballet warm up. So ballet, Generally before a show, it will just be a, a bar, maybe a little bit of Pilates. You just need to get your body warm. Um, but then I've had to learn how to get myself ready vocally because that was just never something I would have done when I got ready for a ballet. Yeah. So my warm up is now twice as long as it used to be because I have to do <laughs> vocal warm ups too. And to just kind of get yourself in that headspace of being Lee's. I mean, generally, as soon as I put her with that wig on and the costume, I just kind of transform into her. But um, yeah, the warm ups a lot more. A ballet warm up's very physical, but obviously, and the vocal warm up. But the kind of the more mental and emotional warm up that you have to do for for a show, for a musical, it is is very very different than what I would have done for a ballet. And I guess unless you're playing Juliet or hmm. something with which is a very dramatic role. But um, yeah, it's. It is quite different, but yeah, ballet class, ballet bar always, without a doubt. <laughs> and, and how many, um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to embarrass myself here, I don't actually know the names of the shoes, uh, but um, okay. the, point how, shoes. sorry? Point shoes. Point shoes, thank you. Yeah. Um, the only, <laughs> <laughs> the only uh, term I know is on point, because uh, it was like the only thing that my um, movement teacher used to say in, in university was, make, make sure your toes are on point. I was like... Got you. Um, <laughs> um, but how many pairs of shoes would you go through a regular sort of week in a show? So you do roughly like seven shows in a week, or like yeah. a good week, I suppose. I'm quite light on my shoes. Um, when I was in, I've changed to my. I actually wear an Australian brand of shoes. Oh, excellent! <laughs> <laughs> Just plug it in there. <laughs> yeah, chuck it in. <laughs> um, they're fantastic because they've last. They last me a lot longer than the other shoes that I used to wear, which I'm not going to mention because I don't. They're still wonderful shoes, but I don't yeah. want to, you know, diss them. Um, <laughs> but some ballerinas will go through literally a pair of show. Wow, it's a lot of sewing because you have to sew all the ribbons on the elastics and everything. But um, I probably go through maybe two or three a week okay yeah right. where some dancers may do like seven right seven. wow yeah because yeah. okay. yeah. it's, it's a lot of it's a lot of effort to be on your toes for that long yeah. so it must like it obviously takes down the shoes yeah I mean they're holding your whole body weight and mm. once you start sweating because they're made mainly out of kind of um canvas um canvas and glue basically oh right and fascinating they're made of wood they're definitely not made of wood oh my god <laughs> I would, I, that would just be a different level if so they were once you, once you start sweating that glue and that canvas kind of starts to disintegrate they get too mushy and then you can get injured if they're too soft so that's why you go through so many pairs Oh, okay. Fascinating. I find, I love, I love learning all new parts of theatre. So that's like really fascinating to me. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I guess let, let's get back to the Australian production and your <laughs> castmates. Um, <laughs> now, obviously I'm not going to ask you to compare castmates from Broadway to the West End and so on, but um, what, uh, how has it been um, getting to know the, the new Australian cast? So you start rehearsals Monday. Um, yeah. You so in... I haven't really got to know people yet that much. I haven't seen them in rehearsal because I'm literally just popping in doing class and leaving um, and letting them get get on with it a bit so um I the moment I'm at the point where I'm just trying to learn everyone's names yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and learning their actual names not their characters names yeah. um, 
but everyone's been so so friendly um yeah it's it's been lovely to meet everyone finally because they've been going now this is their third week of rehearsal right so they're well into it they're yeah they're really into it so Robbie and I only start on Monday so we kind of only have 10 days before we head off to Brisbane because they're kind of think oh they know what they're doing they've done this before and I'm like ah, it was a while ago <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah so they've been rehearsing for two weeks already okay um and they, apparently they did a run of act one on like after the end of the first week which is insane wow. um because if anyone who has seen the show will know it's not just that it's not a scene change as in blackout fly something in lights up the dances the scenery moves the scenery dances and that's choreography as well so not only are you learning the numbers they have to learn to choreograph the scenery every chair has a has a every mirror every so that's so well to do as much as they've done in this short space of time right right okay so it's just a whole different kind of thing to well add in and then you got to add yourself in afterwards as well um so um i guess well i, I want to kind of um also ask about um the musical stylings of the show uh for those who aren't really familiar with it um oh, sorry i oh sorry are you back <laughs> Yeah, I'm back. Sorry, it just went off. I don't know. It's probably my internet here. Sorry about that. No, no, that's totally fine. Um, <laughs> I, I was just, I was just going to ask about the um, uh, the musical. Uh, sorry, the actual music and the score of mm -hmm. the of the show, because um, obviously it needs to kind of fit with both the uh, a musical theatre like Broadway, let's say, style of music, but then you need the real symphonic jazz. Um, style in there as well so for those who aren't familiar with Gershwin's work um, what would you kind of say to them to kind of wrap their heads around what they're coming to hear and see yeah so the Gershwins are quite remarkable really Ira wrote most of the lyrics and George did the um, wrote composed the music so um, not only are George and I are famous for writing, you know, your songbook of I've Got Rhythms, Wonderful, but George famously has written, well, Porgy and Bess, which, you know, is an incredible opera, but George also lived in Paris for a while and wrote An American in Paris, the ballet at the end of this, um, of the show. He famously wrote that in Paris and was inspired by the city itself and how it, it came to life and you can actually hear there's a moment there's like taxi horns and apparently he picked up this taxi horn in a um like a, a flea market type thing in Paris and he had that in the original score and this taxi horn apparently still exists within the in the Gershwin family oh, all right. um, and it in a similar way that um George Gershwin wrote Rhapsody in Blue as a kind of dedication to New York Okay. And American in Paris is a dedication to Paris. So you're getting the whole kind of symphony of, of Gershwin. You get from your kind of popular song book to their, um, uh, you know, the work that George composed, that kind of classical orchestral work as well. So you're, you're getting a bit of everything, really. There's someone, something for everyone in there. Beautiful. I think that's probably what makes this well a smash here or what made it a smash here on on broadway in the west end and now australia as well like i've I heard a lot of people um excited to to finally see it so congratulations on that oh uh, thank yeah i think it works when, like it would work really well as just a, a kind of concert piece really because mm. it's there is so much music and even there's a moment in act two where um there's, oh, now I'm going to forget the song. Oh. But a very famous <laughs> Gershwin song, but it's not being sung. It's just being used as background music. Right. Oh, okay. And, you know, they they had, when um, Christopher Wilden got the rights to make this show, the Gershwins allowed him to use anything he wanted. Wow. It was apparently uncalled, uh, like unheard of. Okay. Um, yeah. He said, right, you can have anything you want. So they literally just picked bits 
bits here and here and like oh we can just literally have eight bars of this or 12 bars of this and they kind of put it together it's it's fascinating actually they've done an incredible job right okay oh yeah that's yeah you're right it is unheard of like a lot of composers don't normally just say yeah here you go have everything yeah exactly and because the the Gershwin estate is there's the Ira estate and there's the George estate and they don't ah, play. okay eye to eye but on this project they did and they were like you can have it all you can have what you want and I think that's what makes it so special musically wow okay well, um, I'll ask one one more thing. Uh, this is more of a personal one. Um, what what do you see is next for you? So you've got uh, American in Paris here coming, doing the tour in Australia. Um, and then, then what? What would your dream role be next? Where would you want to go? Oh, goodness. Um, oh, it's so difficult, isn't it? Uh, because there's so many wonderful shows out there. Mm. Um, I would love to kind of put a pair of tap shoes on. <laughs> I love tap. Uh, anytime in a musical where a tap yeah. number comes in, I'm sold. I'm I mean, like I'm not a tap dancer by any means, but I love the kind of thrill of learning a new skill. Mm. Um, as you can tell, like having not spoken or sang on stage, like, yeah, sure, I'll go to a Broadway show. Um, I would love to uh, um, do something with tap or, um, yeah, just for me, I, what I think I suit is these old school musicals. So something like Singing in the Rain would be an absolute dream. Yeah. But um, yeah, who knows? Uh, but there's so much going on there there's so much new new things happening yeah like with after covid and everything it's if you look back in history and it's the same with this you know with an american of paris after the war there's such an amazing kind of influx of art that happened mm. because everyone's been so suppressed for such a long time that suddenly all this creativity happens and I have a feeling that that's what's going to happen now I, I totally so agree everyone's been so suppressed for such a long time and yeah okay people have been created creative on zoom online instagram whatever but to then be allowed to suddenly all be together and be creative together again. I think there's going to be a huge, huge amount of creativity going on. And I think theatre is going to be absolutely booming and this time next year. Absolutely. Yeah, I totally agree. I, I really do see like that's where we're headed. Um, and fingers crossed that we're both right because that would just be incredible. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, I've, I've, left that, I've wrapped that up there uh, with you. Thank you so much for uh, coming on. Um, I'm so excited for you um and I'm so excited to see it actually myself and just experience something entirely new Where will you be coming to see it Sydney, Sydney. I'll okay. be in Sydney okay yes. great. um yeah I would like to travel at the moment but everything's just so up in the air plus I gotta wait for holidays to come and all that jazz so I think I'll just sit tight and wait for Sydney yeah okay well we'll be well into it by then so the show will be slick exactly <laughs> 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 hey,